All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our Padlet Academy, Padlet for Beginners. We have a few people writing in into the chat where they're calling in from. We'd love to hear where you are joining us from. We are based in San Francisco. Our headquarters are here, and we also have half of our team in Singapore. So we are spread out all over time zones, and we have a lot of customers worldwide. So we wanted to offer a different time zone option today. I see some folks are from Australia. Very cool, welcome. We've got California, awesome. A bit of a late night for you. Hello from Mexico. Hello from Thailand, India. Jamaica, Singapore, wonderful. Very exciting. Romania, oh my gosh, we've got an international crew today. Great. Well, Tosh, how are you feeling? Ready to get this show on the road? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and begin. So welcome, everyone, to Padlet Academy. Woo! So first of all, let's start with what is Padlet. If you're here, Padlet for Beginners a webinar and workshop, you've probably heard of Padlet before, you've maybe used it yourself, but you'd love to have a little bit more details and structure on how you can use it for different things such as lesson planning if you're a teacher, or maybe for personal use or at the office. There's lots of options and lots of ways that you can use Padlet, and that's what we'll cover today. Padlet is a virtual online collaborative tool, and you'll see that there is one example screenshot here, and we're, we'll be creating a Padlet together. But first, I wanna introduce the team. So today you have me, my name is Annabelle, I'll be your Padlet tour guide, and I'm on the membership team in San Francisco, as I mentioned. Our office is in the Presidio, which is a national park, close to the Golden Gate Bridge. So if you're ever in the area, we'd love to meet you. Feel free to stop by the office. We always love meeting Padlet users. And I'm gonna hand it over to Tosh here today. Welcome in everyone. My name is Tosh. I am the Padlet wizard. Uh, I'm on the support team. I've been on the support team for about three years now, um, based in San Francisco as well. Um, so excited to help answer any questions you guys may have. Just put your questions in the Q&A portion um, down on the bottom of your screen, and we'll be able to help out in the Q&A. So um, I'll be monitoring that all session, and at the end, we'll have a short Q&A where you can ask any questions as well. So um, back to you, Annabelle. Let's get this uh, show going. Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, absolutely. Throughout my uh, demonstration, feel free to write in any questions that you have as we go along. Tosh will be helping to moderate that chat. He is a Padlet whiz, so he'll be able to answer any questions you have there. So what we'll cover today, our plan, is to cover how to create a Padlet, how to curate a Padlet, and then also how to collaborate on that Padlet, how to share it with people, different ways you can do that. And we'll close with a few different use cases and examples from real life users and how they have been creating new solutions using Padlet. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a different screen now. All right, so this is my Padlet dashboard. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get here, all you need to do is go to padlet.com and sign in. If you are using Padlet with your school or your business organization, you will notice that it will look a little bit different here. Your organization will provide you with that domain and the link that you need to use to access it. So that will be either, you know, your school or your organization.padlet.org. If you're an individual user, padlet.com is the way to access it. So here you will see your dashboard with all of your most recently accessed Padlets available. You'll also notice on the left side, is a bookmarks tab. You're able to bookmark any Padlet as well as create folders under that bookmarks tab here. Create a new folder. And then going back to recent is where we just started. So I'll be in here in my individual. So let's create a Padlet here together. 
We're going to go to the top right, make a Padlet button. It's hot pink. And you'll see here there's a few different options that pop up. So there is a blank board, which is what we'll start with together. You see that there are some Create with AI features, which we'll also cover together. It's very exciting. And then we'll have templates here. So you can actually create your own templates as well. So if you find yourself using the same sort of Padlet or the same structure, you don't want to reinvent the wheel every single time you use it, you can make your own templates and they'll pop up here. And then we also have over 250 templates available that have been recently released and more are coming out as well. So here you'll see there's discussion boards, bulletin boards, but also different summaries, blogs, brainstorming, and more. There's KWL charts, a lot of different options. And actually in terms of templates, before we create a whole new Padlet together, you can find all of the templates on the left side where you see gallery, where my mouse is. And clicking on that gallery button, you'll see all of the templates I just mentioned. You're able to search through them right here, search templates. And if you are a teacher, which a lot of our users are, you can actually go to education right here and filter by grade so that you can find maybe the best, most applicable templates that you could be using. If you, you know, staring at a blank board, sometimes it's a little intimidating. So if you want somewhere to start off, these templates are a great option. And if I just go ahead and click on one to show you what it would look like, this will give you an example right here. And if you wanted to see the example, you can click right here to see the example. And then if you wanted to go ahead and start creating it, we could click on create. And just to show you, it will be blank and empty, but we'll have that structure. So on the right side with any template, you'll be able to see some instructions in this panel. And then if you wanted to generate some sample posts, you can also do that here. My light just turned on. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So you can also generate some sample posts here and it will show you a few different options just to give you an example, an idea, starting off point. If none of these feel good, you can go ahead and click on delete and add your own. So that's our templates there, very useful. I'll go back to our dashboard though. Um, also, if you're not in education, there are also business templates that we have and I'll definitely show some examples such as an about us page, a directory, for business use cases as well. So now let's actually create our first Padlet. We're gonna go to make a Padlet, that pa uh, pink magenta button on the top right. And we're gonna start with a blank board for now. So here you see an empty Padlet. On the right side, you can rename it. And you'll also see a few different formats available. We're just gonna start with the wall but there are a, uh, up to six right now. So there's a stream, a timeline, a grid, a canvas, and a map. I'll also show you some examples of those as well. The canvas is more free form, more of a brainstorming activity. And then the map is also really helpful in lessons or tour guide. I've seen lots of people have uh, planned their trips using the map Padlet feature. So lots of different options. And we're gonna actually keep the sections off for now, and then we'll turn it on in just a moment. So I'm gonna rename my Padlet here. Let's make a Padlet about Mars, the planet Mars. I've been on a Mars kick recently, so that's what we'll do here together. Mars, the red planet. And we're gonna click on done. Great. So this is a great background, but if you wanna change it up, we can go into our settings, which is this cog, icon on the right side. And this will open up a lot of different options for you. So let's say we wanna customize this wallpaper. We click on wallpaper. As you can see, we have quite a few different ones available for you and they're all beautiful. And you can actually also customize it by uploading your own, creating a drawing or even uh, searching it. So this would be a search. Let's go ahead and look up Mars. We've got some great options here. All of the images that you search within Padlets are royalty free. So no need to worry about that. That looks like a nice background, we'll save. And now you see the background has updated. So now we can actually look at creating our first posts together. So to do that, we click on this plus icon on the bottom right. And this is our first empty post. So every single post consists of three things. There's the subject title, there's the attachment, 
And then there's the body text, right? So here, let's create our first Mars, the planet, yay. All right, we're gonna open up the plus 12, which will open up a dialog box. So these are all of the different types of attachments that you can actually add to a post. So you can nest Padlets within Padlets. You can upload any files and also link any links. All of these blue ones here are ones that you can create or record in Padlet itself. So you can take a photo, record a video, audio, screen recording, or actually draw yourself. This is great for interactive activities in the classroom. So if you want students to maybe record um, a video of them completing an assignment or maybe doing a short presentation, we've also seen some language teachers have their students audio record uh, practicing speaking the new language. And then there's also these green ones, which are polls, connecting your Google Drive, and an I can't draw. So let's start creating these together. I would love to start with a poll right here. Let's say, do you believe in aliens? And we can have up to four options. So we're gonna say absolutely yes. Not sure, maybe, mm, not likely. And absolutely not. And we're gonna go ahead and click add and publish this. So you'll see that this post or this poll pops up as a post right here. Once people start voting, you'll see these results start to show up. And then you'll actually be able to vote on this in just a few minutes when I share this Padlet with you when we talk about how to collaborate and share. So think of what your answer is gonna be. We're gonna add some more posts here. And another way to do this is you can actually uh, drag and drop files from your computer. So let's say you want to upload more than one file at a time. You can drag more than one file over. If you click on this upload, you can also upload here, but it will only allow you to do one at a time. So what I'm going to do off screen right now that you won't see because I'm only sharing one screen is I'm going to drag and drop a few different files over. So I have some videos, I have a PDF, and they're going to be uploading here on the bottom you'll see. So as they're uploading, you'll see that here is an image, upload. And I'm just gonna copy and paste some text so that you can see what it would look like with text. So there's our first image upload. We also have this PDF, which is really great. So PDF upload. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this without any body to show you what that would look like. This is a MP4, so this was a short video upload. So let's say MP4 video upload here. And I'm gonna copy and paste again, a different text just to show you. And then the last one here is a long PDF as well. So this is a long image, so longer uh, PDF image. And we'll publish. So you'll, you'll see that there's quite a lot of things are already populating our Padlet. But let's say you actually want to add another post. We'll click on the plus sign on the bottom right and click on that plus 12 again. And then here, I can't draw in green is also a great feature. It's one of our AI image generation features. So this is really fun. Uh, we've seen people use this as an icebreaker activity and really just to get their... Um, either their students or also their peers or colleagues engage with the material. It's really fun. So let's make one together. Let's do, mm, how about an alien, since that's our theme, an alien drinking Coca-Cola on Mars. All right, and let's see what it'll give us here. It usually will give you about three to six options for you to choose from. And again, all of this is going to be uh, your own creation and property. So copyright free, royalty free, you can use these images however you'd like. So you see we have a few images here of aliens drinking Coca-Cola. Um, let's see, I really like, which one do I like? I'm gonna pick this bottom left. All right, and then I'm gonna just copy and paste that prompt that we use so people can see. And also here at the top, 
what has been helpful is if people put their name at the top, then they're able to see, you can imagine a whole Padlet board full of folks introducing themselves or icebreakers with their name and their image. So that's a really fun feature as well. Now, if we go back to clicking on creating new post, and then again, open up this dialog box. Other great features here is you can actually image search, YouTube search, GIF search, web search, et cetera, directly from Padlet. So if I click on this image, and then let's look up Mars, this is an image straight from Padlet that you can use. So image search. And again, I'm just gonna copy and paste some text so you can see what it would look like. And then if you wanna organize anything, you can really just drag and drop because we've got a lot of files here, but how would you organize it, right? Make it more neat. So you can drag and drop here. And what you can also do is add sections. So let's do that now. Actually, one thing I wanna show you before adding sections is if we plus, click the plus sign, add another one. This YouTube feature is really helpful. If you want anyone to see, watch a quick YouTube video, maybe for orientation, maybe um, there's a communication thing you want them to watch or something before your meeting or anything like that, you can really just search on YouTube. And I, I like this one. So this is a YouTube video. Okay. And let's publish it without any text, just so you can see. So now, you know, you want to organize it, make it a little bit more easier to see. I'm going to go to the settings gear icon on the right where my mouse is. And then we're going to click group posts by section and just enable this. And you'll see that it put everything into one section. So let's add a few sections. The first one can be welcome. The second one can be general info. The third one, let's make it maybe impact and then collaboration. So now we have a few sections. I'm going to drag and drop just how I did before to organize my Padlet here. So maybe I want them here. This PDF is nice right there. And I actually want to add one more section for maybe feedback. I'm going to drop this one right here. All right. So you can see, you can put some welcome videos, orientation things, general information, maybe events. And this is another way for you to organize your Padlet. Wonderful. You can also see how this could be used for different things in terms of using a different format. So now I want to show you how we can use exactly what we created, but just change the format with one click. So we're going to go back into the settings icon. And here under format, as I mentioned in the beginning, we started with a wall, but let's say you wanted to change it up a little bit. Well, let's click on timeline just to show you what it would look like. As you can see, all the sections that you created will stay there. It will just organize it and look a little bit different. Now let's change it to a different format here. A stream is more exactly what it sounds like, stream of consciousness. This is great for newsletters or blog posts. A different format as well is a grid, so more square-like. And then I really love the canvas feature. So this is going to be a lot more freeform and more creative. So you can see all of our posts are kind of all over the place. And the reason for this is because you can put it anywhere you want on the screen. There's no snap to logic. You can also change the size of these images if you want one thing to be, maybe this is the most important thing for them to see. We'll put that there, make it really big. We can also put these images over here. If we double click on a post, it will open it up for you so they can see the images more clearly. So let's say maybe this is how we kind of want to organize it. If you keep scrolling, you'll see that there's more space for you to create more posts. Now, let's say because this is a canvas, you want to connect the dots between some posts or some ideas. So what you can do is create arrows and relationships. So let's say if we click on the three dots on any of the posts, you can go ahead and click connect to a post and pick any of these. And now there's an arrow here. So regardless of where you move this post, 
it will maintain that relationship. So you can imagine how you can use this for brainstorming or mind mapping activities. And I'll actually show you a great example of a creative um, approach that one teacher used to use the Canvas format with their students. Excellent. Now, let's say you, you have the Canvas, but you actually wanna go back to the wall, how we started. You just click on the gear icon and click on the wall. And it's actually going to keep all of those sections that you organized in the beginning. So you will still be able to keep those. It's not going to forget it. And then one last thing that I'll show you is that map feature, which can be really helpful for international teams, or really, as I said, if you wanted just to plan a trip or do a, um, I had one teacher use this to have a virtual tour and created that for their students, which was really interesting. As you can see, all of the points are in Antarctica because we haven't added locations yet. But if we click on one, it will show you the post that we created, and then you can click on edit, and then add this location right here. So let's say we wanna put San Francisco, and this is about Mars, so maybe we're starting the trip in San Francisco. And maybe we wanna put another one. Let's put this one in Singapore and update. And you'll see that you now have maps or pins on the maps. So then if you click on the post on the left side, you're also able to see them here. So this is a great tool to use. You can also um, change the format or the, the look of the map itself if you wanted to. When you click on the gear icon, click on map style, and you can see that there are a few different options for you here as well. So that's always a fun feature. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to the wall format that we started with. Here we go. And actually, I wanna change this background to these nice mountains. Beautiful. So now we have quite a few different files. We've actually organized our posts and our file uploads. We've also created some files and images as also YouTube videos just from searching within Padlet. We've created a poll as well, but now you have all this, how can you share it with other people, right? How can you actually collaborate with folks? So there's a few different ways to do it. One way to encourage collaboration is you can actually add comments. So we can do that here by clicking on the settings gear icon again and enabling comments. What you can also do is enable reactions and you can choose from likes, upvotes or downvotes and some stars and some other options. I'm just gonna click on likes so we can leave that there. And now you'll see when we go back to our posts, you can actually leave a comment on any of these posts. So very cool image. And there it is. With the name attached, if you want the name to be attached to comments or to posts, we can also enable the author. So we're gonna click on the settings again, and we have author and timestamp. So this way you can actually see who is creating each post and when they did that. If that's relevant, maybe for your classroom, you want your students to add some posts and you wanna see who is adding it, that's one way to do it. So I'm gonna to toggle that off. I'm actually gonna hide that here. Now, let's say you actually wanna share it finally with your students, right? Or with your class or with your peers, your colleagues, your teams. What you can do is you go to the arrow on the top right and the visitor permissions and link privacy is what we'll look at first. So in terms of permissions, when you share this Padlet with someone, you wanna think about, do you want them to actually have the power to add a post? If yes, then we're gonna keep this as a writer. That way they'll be able to click on the plus sign the same way we did together, and they can add their own posts. If you don't want them to add posts, you only want them to be able to read your Padlet, maybe add comments or leave a like, then you can click on reader. And that way they will still be able to leave comments, but they cannot add their own posts. And then of course, if you wanted to actually moderate with someone and invite maybe a colleague, you can add them as a moderator. 
For link privacy, also great. Um, secret is exactly what it sounds like. Only people with the link will be able to access this. Secret password, you'll need a password and the link. Secret login is great um, if you want, again, if you want names attached when we enabled author timestamp. If you want names attached when folks are adding posts, you will want to enable secret login. Now, going back to when I began, I said, if you have Padlet with your school or your organization, you're gonna to go to your separate domain. So if you have one of those Padlet accounts where you access it through a separate domain with your organization, you will have another option here that will say secrets and org only. So that will only be available to folks who are in your organization logged in with that email or domain. So that's just an added level of security there. I'll just keep it secret. Public, it's very rare that um, we see public being used, but this will actually enable it to be completely public and actually searchable in Google. So if maybe you have an About Us page and you want that to be public to everyone, then this would be a, uh, the, the link privacy option that you would choose. And that's actually what Padlet uses. We have an About Us page using a Padlet and it is public for everyone to see. And I'll show you that in a moment. I'll keep this secret for now though. So here you see, you can copy this link or you can actually just copy the link straight from your browser and then you can share it. So what I'm gonna do actually, just for fun, is I'll share it in the chat so you can see just how easy it is to access a Padlet. So it's gonna be in the chat actually. Um, yep, it should be seen, oh. Maybe Tosh can help me out by sharing it with everyone. But that way you'll be able to access this Padlet that I just created. And actually I would love for you to submit your answer to this poll about whether you believe in aliens. So then you can vote here, click on vote, and then you will see the results as well. So it's very simple to access a Padlet. Another way to do that is if you're in a presentation or you're presenting this to your team or again, a classroom, you can actually do a QR code. So click on get QR, you can have this there. Your team can scan this on their devices and be taken directly to your Padlet. So there's a couple other things that I think are really helpful to show you too. Those are really the basics. Now I'm gonna add a couple of, show you a couple of features that will kind of level up your experience of Padlet. So you have all these posts, you have all the files that you wanna share. And let's say you only wanna share just one section, just one section with people. You don't want them to see the whole thing, you just want them to see general info. What you can do is you can click on these three dots, and then you can click on copy breakout link right here. And I'll copy that. I'm actually going to go ahead and paste it right here. And now you'll see that you can actually only see the general info with the image upload and the files that we chose under that section. So if you only wanted one section to be visible, you can choose to, again, the same thing I just did is click on these three dots and copy this breakout link. Another way to do that is you can click on this arrow button, the share. And then here under breakout links as well, you'll see all of the different links for each section. So you'll see that it is organized by section. So different ways that we've seen this used, uh, we can you can organize it by person. So you can have it by name or you can have different groups. And I'll show you some examples of that again in a few minutes. Another great feature is, uh, let's say you want your students to contribute and add an assignment or add their you know, discussion responses, but you don't want them to see what the rest of the students have said, or maybe you're asking for feedback at your team meeting and you don't want everyone to see everyone else's feedback until after, or maybe not at all. So what you can do is you can actually use submission request links. So if we click on this share again, we're gonna click on submission request link right here. We'll enable it. And here are a couple different options, right? So after the submission, after they 
give their feedback or after they give their responses to the questions, you can choose, do you want them to open up the whole Padlet so that they can see everyone else's responses? Or number two, do you want them just to have a confirmation page where it will just say, thank you for your contribution? Or do you want them to add another post or add more feedback, add more uh, posts or responses to the questions? So let's say we just want, thank you for your contribution. I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy. And just to show you what it would look like, I'm gonna copy this same link. And here you see that you can now submit a response and maybe you can say this, you know, uh, leave your name and then add any files that you want. And this is my feedback here. You can also add custom fields to ask specific questions here. I'll publish. And then here it says, thank you for your contribution. And that's that. If I had selected, if I had selected here, to open the Padlet, here I'm going to copy this. And then again, just do the same exact thing. Maybe leave my name, and then this is my feedback. Then we go ahead and click Publish. When I publish it, I'm now taken to the entire Padlet, as I mentioned. So that's also another option for you. I see that some of you all have been responding to the poll. We have about 10 votes right here, as you can see. We're a little bit split, but I love it. We've got some maybes, some absolutely yeses. We got another vote. And as you can see, it's dynamic. So it just went from 10 to 11. So as people vote, now we have 12. Amazing. As people are voting, you'll actually be able to see it increase dynamically. And the same with collaboration as well. All collaboration is live. Another great feature that I would love to show you is our slideshow feature. So if you have a Padlet and you wanna share it really easily, make it into a slideshow, you could really save yourself a lot of time. You don't need to copy and paste it into another program. All you need to do is click on this play button on your right side, and it turns everything that you created into a slideshow with one button. So each post has its own slide. As you can see the images we created, you can play videos within this slideshow right from here. This was the feedback that I left. Now you have the image uploads, again, the video uploads. And I also wanna show you this PDF. You can actually scroll through PDFs within the slideshow, which that blew my mind when I found that out because I've never seen that anywhere else. I think it's a really cool feature. Maybe I'm just a little bit nerdy, but it's very fun. You don't need to exit the slideshow. Maybe you need to discuss some you know, instructions or other material. You can just scroll through it. And then of course, I'm gonna go to the poll right here. You'll also see that this is dynamic too. So as poll results come in, as your team or your students are voting and leaving responses, you'll see this increase as well while you're in the slideshow. So again, all of this is dynamic and you'll see it come in as it comes in. Great. Another thing about the slideshow is that you can auto play it. If you click on auto on the bottom left, so that way, if you wanted to spend maybe a couple of diff a couple seconds on different slides, maybe to show um, student work while it's while you're teaching or presenting something, it'll be playing in the background. This is a great option. Um, it's also great if you have you know maybe a team meeting and you just want to display some feedback. This will be playing in the background as well. So a lot of great different options. And those of you who also remember how we started our presentation today. I was actually using that slideshow feature when we first started. Wonderful. So now I wanna just talk and show you a few examples, but if we go back into, actually I wanna show you, we're gonna go into our dashboard. So this is our dashboard that we started with. If we click on make a Padlet, I actually wanna show you the AI features really quickly as well before I show you those examples. So here, if you see Create with AI, you can actually choose to create a lesson plan, a timeline, a map, activities, reading list, assessment polls, and also a custom board. So we are also creating new ones as we speak. So this might be updated as well. 
but these are ones that we've had a lot of good feedback from. So if we click on lesson plan here, it'll show you some prompts. So what you can do is create the subject. Let's say we are an astronomy teacher to keep with the theme, astronomy. And then let's say we're teaching higher education, but you can actually select more than one. So if you're teaching maybe 11th and 12th graders as well as higher ed, you can do that there. Let's add a topic. We're gonna say Mars, the planet. If you have any standards that you need to align to as a teacher, you can add this here as well. That is optional. And then adding additional details is always helpful. So you can add things like the class duration. Maybe it's an hour long, maybe it's 90 minutes, any resources or accommodations, methodology or more. So I can say something like, please create a lesson plan for my higher ed students. And again, this is a little redundant, but I'm just showing you some details you can add because we've selected this already here. It's not necessary to add. And um, about the planet Mars. And then you can say, please add sections for um, general information. Um, impact on humanity, collaboration, and uh, add fun activities for them to learn the material. I'm also going to add something great that you can add is, you know, uh, for my hyperactive students, right? So this can be great because it'll actually tailor the activities for hyperactive students. And if you click on create, this will take maybe about a minute. Um, one great thing that I wanna uh, highlight here is that we are using chat GPT-4, which is the latest version. So with Padlet, if you're using it, you or your teachers really get a free subscription to chat GPT-4, which is about $20 per month, I believe. So that's a great fun feature. And that's just included with your Padlet account. We don't feature gate at Padlet. So all of the features that I'm talking about now are available on the free account as well. The only difference is how many Padlets you can actually create. So in terms of AI, we know there's a lot of people who are split. Some people love it. Some people are maybe a little bit nervous about it. We decided to leave it in your hands and we wanted to allow teachers to use it. So if you are in the teacher role in your account, you will be able to use this magic Padlet, magic AI. If you are in a student role, it will not allow you because we've seen students be really creative and we wanted it to be uh, up to you, up to your decision. So if, you know, if you're a school-wide or organization-wide account there. So one other thing here is it is gonna add some images if you want it to. Um, you can ask it to, or um, sometimes it'll pull from our Hive and Dolly. Sometimes it'll also pull from Bing. So we have it populating here. You can see it's creating all of the different sections that I have asked it to. And there are images. There's also some links to nasa.gov, to Trek on Mars. So really this took about a minute. And as I scroll, you can see that there's quite a bit of information here. So this is a great jumping off point for anyone really. A lot of teachers love this feature because it can really help save you a lot of time. We found that teachers are giving us the feedback that they're already using things like ChatGPT. So it saves you that time in terms of copy and pasting. And also if you are just using this for other reasons and not teaching, also really helpful. As I mentioned, I've seen people ask the AI feature to help them plan a trip. And they were asking, oh, we're going to be going on a trip to uh, Costa Rica. So I'd love to see the top 10 tourist destinations in this region. Help me through it. And then it actually created a map with different posts. So you really can see that the options to create this thing with AI is really endless. So it has some fun activities as requested with a Kahoot, some drawing options, all of the sections that I requested, plus some more. So learning objectives, materials, assessments, homework. There's a lot here. If there's anything that you don't like, 
maybe something is not quite up to par, you can always delete it, right? So you can click on the three dots and delete this post, right? So this is a great jumping off point. Again, we always recommend that you proofread this and make sure that it is actually saying what you wanted to say before sharing it with your team or your students, as you would recommend with ChatGPT in general. But again, this has saved a lot of people using Padlet a lot of time. So it's a great fun feature here. So all of the basically all of the Padlet that we created ourselves right here, Magic Padlet created in about less than a minute. And there are different language capabilities as well. So if you wanted to use Magic Padlet, you can just tell it to make the response in a different language, such as Spanish. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now I'd love to show you a few quick examples. So I'm going to go right here. So a few wonderful examples that we've seen real teachers create. This one is an ocean ecosystem one. So this is a teacher who had some group projects scheduled. So what she did is she actually created the sections just like we did her group. So you'll see that it is also color coded and she pinned a few different posts to the top. So to pin a post, you just click on these three dots and click on pin. It's already pinned, so we're not gonna do that there. And you'll see that it has a little pin with the word pinned right there. Now the color coding is really helpful because it's visually pleasing, but also it serves a purpose. So if you click on this search button on the top right, you can go ahead and click on filter and filter by colors. So let's say you don't wanna show all the information right away. You can just click on blue and say, all right, everyone, thanks for coming in. This is your group projects, please get into your groups. Then you can say, okay, I would love for you to watch this short two minute video. And then you can go ahead and get in your groups, watch it together. And then let's enable the yellow one now. Okay, great. I actually want you all to discuss these questions together and answer you know, why these different things are important. And let's say you wanted to color code all of their maybe homework in white. You can do that here. So now here's your homework with your group assignment. Your students can go ahead and click into it, access these PDFs and respond. Just keeping it more organized. And then um, also, as we mentioned, those breakout links, I just wanted to show you one more time. If you wanted the groups to only see their information, right? So kelp forest, you only want this group to see their kelp forest. You can click on these three dots, just reiterating what we saw before and click on copy breakout link. If I paste it here, you'll see that this is only the kelp forest section. They can't see anything else. So that's really helpful. And then this teacher went one step further, actually, and she wanted to organize all of their assignments into one Padlet board for herself to keep herself organized. So what she did was she created another Padlet and added it under assignments. And then if uh, her students clicked in here, you can see kind of what I showed you earlier is they can submit their assignment by attaching a file and there'll be different file uploads available. She also added some specific questions. What was your favorite part? Any other questions here? So once your students or anyone would submit it, those options, right, they can actually be taken to the whole board or they can just be taken to that thank you page as we saw earlier. So this is a great example here. I'd love to show you another one. This was a science experiment, also another teacher. And you can see that this person actually decided to organize their sections by student. So that's something that I had mentioned earlier, where you can see Amy column, Amy's column ha uh, has all of her answers and reflections, uploads, videos, photos right here. And again, if you only wanted Amy to see Amy's column, you can click on the three dots and copy that breakout link, or just one more time going into the share and then under breakout links, you'll see every single person has their own specific link. So that's also a really great way to organize everything. I'm gonna show you another example here. This is a lesson guide for the whole semester. So this is a geometry teacher who actually chose to organize their entire semester, their entire term into one Padlet. 
So this is great because the students only have one link and they don't ever need to think about going somewhere else because the entire term is the same link. So you'll see it's organized by day, day one, standards in the units. If I scroll to the right, this teacher actually added some resources too, like Khan Academy, also warm-up exercises. They added PDFs. You know, they can add any documents, other resources for their students. Even their quizzes are available here. And if I scroll all the way to the right, you'll see it keeps going and it keeps going. So this teacher really, really went all out and went really detailed just to keep it more organized. If the students wanted to, they can click on the PDF. They have all of these options available. And they can answer those questions as well. So this is just another way to organize your Padlet. So this was created the exact same way that we created our Mars Padlet. It's just that they added new columns for each day and subject. I'm gonna show you one more example, actually a couple more. Um, this is a great collaboration example. So this is a study guide. And this is more of um, students being able to add different documents and speeches, creating this study guide together, collaborating. So you can see that there's, again, organization and videos, documents, key events. So students were able to all contribute to this, add their posts, and create a study guide together. And now this one is one that I love showing um, as well, because I alluded to this one earlier when we were talking about the Canvas format. So this is a forensics teacher who actually, or forensic professor rather, who created a murder mystery activity for their students as a fun homework assignment. So you can see this is the Canvas format. It's a lot more free form. There's arrows, there's relationships, there's images, there's also links. There's a PDF here on the top left, which has the questions that need answered. Again, the students can just open this, respond to those questions. And as you scroll, you can see that this is a really rather creative way to use a Padlet. So I love showing this one because it really just shows how many different formats you can create activities and assignments in. Now, another one here is the map. So I would love to show you this map challenge. This is actually something that we use at Padlet. So we, when we go to conferences, we actually teach you how to fold a paper crane because the crane is our symbol. And so if you'll see here, we encourage people to fold their cranes and then take a photo and add their location of where they're from. So you can see there's quite a few different places that people have been folding cranes from and they can add their photos and their location. So similar to the maps that I showed you earlier, you can add these locations. And then if you wanted to flip this map into a wall, you could do that very easily, right? So if you wanted to click on the settings icon, the gear, and the format, we go to wall. So let's say you just wanted to see all of this in one, you know, big wall, exactly as it's called. You can see that here. It's a very, very simple switch. And then let's say we want to go back to the map. Easy peasy, we go back to the map. And here we go. So that's something that we really do use internally and externally at Padlet, which is a great example. And then this is also a Padlet example. As I mentioned earlier, you can use this for your business. This is a public facing about us page. So this is Padlet's about us. You'll see all of the folks who work at Padlet. And this was created again, exactly the same way that we created a Padlet together. And this is a public facing in the settings. Perfect. And I believe that's the last example I wanted to show y'all. So I would love to leave some room for uh, questions and answers and also a feedback form. So Tosh will share the feedback form in the chat. This is a great place for us to, you know, create better webinars and experiences for you. If you wanted to see something different or maybe something more in depth, we'd love to hear from you. And while he's putting that in the chat there, I'll also briefly mention Padlet for Schools. So Padlet for Schools is a really great option for um, anywhere, either departments or an entire school. Usually 10 or more teachers is what we go for with a Padlet for Schools account. 
And we found that teachers actually prefer to have Padlet for schools, and I'll show you why. Let me go back to my dashboard. So if I go into my school account, actually, I'm gonna do that right here. So as you'll see, the first thing is at the top, the URL has changed. It's a custom domain, which makes it a lot more secure. So it's padletoncollege.padlet.org now. It's no longer on padlet.com. And with a Padlet for Schools account, all teachers and all students get unlimited Padlets. So that's a great feature as well. And then, of course, the school admins will have those admin controls and oversight. So a few of those admin oversight tools are right here. So you'll be able to connect your single sign-on SSO, as well as your LMS under organization info. So if you use Google or Microsoft or something else to have that single sign-on for your school or your organization, you'll be able to connect that here. Again, this is added security. It keeps it all into one safe environment. And then connecting your LMS is very easy to do here. So if you use Blackboard, Canvas, Schoology, other things like that. We also, for the Padlet for Schools account, have permissions, uh, role-based permissions. So you can see that students and teachers are able to have different permissions set up. So if you don't want students doing something on Padlet, but you want teachers to be able to, this is where you can do that. Another great feature is that we designed something called Safety Net. So this is our AI content moderation tool, really keeping it a safer environment for your students as well. So this automatically moderates and flags anything under these categories here. So again, we you can toggle this on and off as you please, but they're all default turned on. We have had some art schools and art teachers have um, a little bit of confusion of why all of their paintings were being flagged and sculptures being flagged due to the presence of this nudity here. So if you wanted to turn it off for a little bit, you're able to, that's up to the admin's prerogative. They're all default turned on though for maximum safety. And again, with Padlet for Schools, you would get an analytics dashboard, which is really helpful information on your usage, how many people are using it, how many are using creating Padlets. After three months of use, you would also have this timeline here. And then you would have user oversight as well. So you can see who is who, their last activity date, how many Padlets they're creating. And then you'd also be able to manage your people with this manage people option. Again, this gives you a lot more oversight and control. So if you go into click on someone here, you can click on their profile and you'll see all of the Padlets that they've recently created or been contributing to. Again, just giving you more control over what your students are doing for more safety. Of course, you can update any passwords as you need, add any new users, um, upload CSVs, multiple users at a time, or just share an invite link with your teachers and your students. They'll be prompted to sign in with their single sign-on, and it's really easy for you from an admin standpoint. So I just wanted to show you that really quickly um, as a Padlet for Schools option. So if that is something that's interesting for you, go ahead and leave that on the feedback form. If you want me to reach out to you, you'll be talking to me directly. So I can schedule a call and we can talk then about more Padlet for Schools information. So now, thank you all for listening. I would love to open the floor to any Q and A's uh, or maybe any questions that have come up, Tosh, throughout the chat that you want to speak on. Yeah, thanks for uh, presenting, Annabelle. That was great. Uh, so many great questions in the chat. So many um, great comments. Um, I see one question here in the Q&A um, about how to arrive to the magic Padlet part um, where you can create Padlets with AI. Um, so to if you go to the pink Make a Padlet button on the top right, um, you should see the option to create with AI. However, if you do not see this option, um, this is actually probably because of the account type that you have. Um, so you'll have to actually change this from your account settings from the bottom left corner. Um, just click into your settings and go to your um, basic info settings. Um, and what you can do here is change your role. Um, you'll be able to change your role to a teacher role since this is within a uh, 
Pilot for Schools account, that role is already provisioned. But within your account, what you can do is um, from this page, just change your settings to your uh, to a teacher role within your uh, settings, and you'll be able to access Magic Padlet. Um, I also saw some questions about um, where to, and Annabelle's showing that right now. So you see there in the account type, you actually have the option to select which account type um, you are at um, on the free and platinum account. So just make sure that you make that a teacher and you'll be able to access those Magic Padlet features. Uh, awesome. I was getting uh, a few questions about where to access some of um, the Padlet Academy resources. How can I watch um, recordings? Um, your one-stop shop for all of um, Padlet Academy resources and really just to learn more about how to use Padlet will be padlet.link slash webinars. Um, and I'm putting that in the chat right now. And you'll be taken to, of course, a Padlet um, where you can see some of our upcoming sessions. You can actually suggest a session yourself if you would like. Um, you can watch recordings of our past sessions. And you can also see some great Padlet for schools um, articles and documentations and kind of how to get in contact with us to help get more teachers at your school to use Padlet um, and set up a Padlet for Schools account. And of course, at the end, there is the feedback survey um, that I shared in the chat. So we do appreciate if you fill out the feedback form as um, we're always looking to make this as um, beneficial for you as possible. Um, not seeing many other questions in the chat here. And um, we are wrapping up here on time. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, Annabelle, thank you for joining as well and sharing. Um, I don't know if you have anything else, but um, thanks for yeah. joining everyone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for your engagement with the chat. I saw Tosh answering lots of questions. And if you have any follow-ups, let us know. Um, you can use that contact form or in the feedback form as well if you want us to reach out to you. So we're always happy to answer your questions and we really appreciate your engagement. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening or day or rest of your 